I don't know really why they came here. And then they shut the whole city down. So it's like they just came here to meet in, in a space. You know, they could have met in Washington. The stories that are out there, of course, are things about how, you know, Pittsburgh is such a great city. It has not suffered the same economic, you know, downfalls that other cities and the rest of the country has had for that matter and how like look at what happened with the steel industry in the 70s and how they've you know been able to reinvent themselves mm -hmm. but I think that what often gets overlooked is that part of the reason that the cost of living in Pittsburgh is as low as it is part of the reason that it's as comfortable a size of a city so to speak with the people is because there was a huge mass exodus when the collapse happened it's why there are so many vacant storefronts and so many buildings that are available for rent, for lease, and why the cost of living is so low. Because not everybody could find a job here in the 70s who had been employed by the steel industry. Years ago, when the mills were running, this was known as the Steel City, and it was known as a smoky city. And um, unfortunately, people that don't come here have that in their mind, what Pittsburgh used to be like. Uh, and as you know now, it's not like that anymore. Now, possibly, because of the G20 summit, maybe uh, industry and companies move to the city of Pittsburgh or decide to work with companies that are here in the city of Pittsburgh so I think the benefits outweigh um, any of the negatives that you hear out there. You know no one came in and helped the steel workers that went away I mean that, at the margin we certainly tried to retrain them you know we kind of invented worker retraining here because we, we were left with this large number of unemployed steel workers that were trained for a particular industry had expected to spend their whole careers in those industries and when that industry went away they they were left with very few options so that's when we suffered this massive out migration Pittsburgh really changed um, as a result as we lost several hundred thousand folks over the 80s uh, and moving forward uh, you know more could have been done uh, we certainly uh, didn't uh, help all the communities here that were you know, as those people left we certainly still have to this day a lot of very uh, distra distressed communities uh, and that's when I say there's not, uh, no policy you know, really came in and took care of those communities in ways that might have happened elsewhere. I mean, so uh, people were forced to move. People were forced to move far away. Um, and those who didn't move away probably were left unemployed for, for an extended period of time without you know, any significant you know, social safety net. Bluefield is a very quiet neighborhood. I don't know if you know anything about Pittsburgh, but we have 77 neighborhoods here. Bluefield is one of the very oldest and one of the nicest. Very quiet, nothing very much goes on. And I read that there was going to be this demonstration here, and I thought, who is going to go to this? <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people or not a lot of people. I was personally not going to be involved. And then they started saying, you know, they weren't going to get permits. And I said, well, now we have to go. You know, our message going door to door is, you know, we're your, your coworkers, we're your neighbors, we're your friends. Uh, we're trying to defend our communities from the attack that the G20 represents. Uh, the, the G20's policies have already, uh, the, the free trade policies promoted by the World Bank and the IMF, for instance, which will be in attendance. Uh, have already decimated Pittsburgh. We don't want that to happen again. So we're, we're here to protect our communities and, and they're your communities too. What about the concerns about violence? Concerns about violence. I feel like uh, there's been a fixation in the media on violence which will lead to justifying in advance the police brutality that's being prepared for us. Uh, the G20 for us is violence. I mean, I think it's so appropriate that we're in Pittsburgh because we're, we're, ha we're about to have a gathering of global pirates. Uh, the G20, the Gangster 20, these, these are the 20 nations that ultimately dictate the fates of, uh, of 7 billion people on this earth. Uh, the fact is that no matter how small the crowd is that gathers to confront the G20, they're speaking for the vast majority of the people on this earth, uh, regardless of what kind of police state uh, emerges here, regardless of how uh, little of a voice they end up having in any kind of an official thing. Uh, the fact is that for the past 10 years there's been a very vibrant anti-corporate globalization movement, not an anti-globalization movement, we're all about globalization, but an anti-corporate globalization movement that has largely been driven by the global south. And so what we're seeing here is the necessary uh, outcry and passionate call for policies that are not based on exploitation, uh, standing against economic neoliberalism that unfortunately is continuing unabated uh, under Obama. And the fact is that you have these client states that gather and huddle around the United States and take their direction in this global conquest to exploit working people and poor people around the world. So, you know, people that come to these protests, and I've gone to them often, 
uh, are those that are standing up for what the vast majority of people in the world agree on, and that is that these economic policies and military policies need to be confronted and need to stop. Entonces, esta es una realidad que estamos viviendo y que, bueno, en estos eventos hemos estado expresando nuestro deseo y nuestra exigencia que las cosas deben cambiar. Y que los gobiernos que se reúnen en, en Pittsburgh tienen que reconsiderar esta política neoliberal que se viene aplicando y tiene que invertirse en seguridad, en educación, en empleos en los distintos países. Yeah, the G20 is meeting here and it seems like their big focus is on climate change and on the economic crisis. You know, those are like the two things that they're saying is why they need to come to Pittsburgh to have this meeting. <clears throat> and I think the thing that really strikes me about this whole idea is like the people who are coming to me here to talk about how to fix those things literally are the people who engineered those problems. Democracy is necessary now, actual radical democracy. We, we actually have to start listening to unexpected voices. I'm looking around at the people who are protesting and I think if we let them all loose on Pittsburgh to do their will for as long as they wanted, they couldn't do $10,000 worth of damage to the city. So it seems like a, a pretty obnoxious expenditure and it's really more a show of police power to me than it is an actual attempt to control uh, illegal activity. You know, the, the police force they have here is worthy of an Al-Qaeda raid and, you know, fortunately, Al-Qaeda has not taken up the invitation to be here. Um, but it's it's almost inexplicable when you think that they're training this on mostly a bunch of bunch of peaceful demonstrators. Costs will be roughly twenty million dollars, um, and right now I think they're all estimates on what the costs are going to be. We have a commitment of over seventeen million dollars uh, from the state, uh, and that money's in hand. Uh, we we uh, introduced ordinances and passed them and accepted the money from the state. Uh, if there is a gap. Um, once it's over with, I mean, that's something we're going to have to deal with financially. Our neighborhoods are, are making a sacrifice because of the attention to downtown. And I've received calls here uh, every day that our neighborhoods aren't being um, taken care of or looked after like they used to because our, all of our resources are thrown into the downtown Oakland Southside area to, in preparation of the G20 summit. Those of us who want to be breathing in 50 years uh, have a slightly different agenda than uh, next quarter's profit. I don't think that Pittsburgh needs the kind of investment that the G20 would attract. I think that we uh, rose from the ashes quite a few decades ago, actually, and are moving on a very sustainable and interesting path. There are wonderful groups in Pittsburgh that are working on sustainable Pittsburgh. Uh, we have a terrific collection of uh, CSAs and people who are uh, supporting local agriculture. We have locavore restaurants. We have uh, a, a global focus in terms of support for the, some of the poorest people in the world. We have a very active Haitian Solidarity Committee and people working uh, on peace uh, you know, around the world. So I think that there are more democratic and better better ways to tackle these problems than from a purely financial angle. How can we wring the last nickel out of the coming quarter?